Hey, it's Mitch from Swap Time, and we're going to do an overview of the Gen 5 engine harness. This one we just completed today. This harness does have a few extra modifications. This is used in uh, the Jeep JKs, so it uses a special CAN bus module to interface the Jeep to the GM side. But the hot rod version that I also make isn't too different. But I'll go over all the connections on this harness and tell you what they do. And also how to disconnect this from the engine. Some of these connectors are really finicky and a, a pain. Let's start at the ECU first. You have X1, 2, and 3. These are your main computer connectors. This is for the engine ECU. They're on 8 speeds, there's one other connector that looks just like this. It's going to be right there. And how you know you have 8 speed set up, in case you don't know what the transmissions look like, is you have this huge connector. This is twice the size and a totally different design of the 6L80 connector. 6L80 connector. Got a lot of harnesses I'm working on. This is a 6L80 connector. Alright, so we have the ECU. Now we'll come down and we'll branch off into this area. This connector right here, it can be in varying pinouts, like maybe a six pin, a 10 pin. Um, this one has my fan control coming out of it. So this will control a PWM fan. Next you have this connector, this is the emissions connector. And if you need emissions in your vehicle, I make an emissions harness. This small connector here, it does, has ambient air temp. So if you want ambient air temp to show up, you can install a sensor. Um, this is something to add on. This is part of my plug and play system. Um, we have to worry about that. That's just on the Jeep side. This is the busman panel that's installed, fused with relays. Coming down here, this is the interior connection of the vehicle. Um, as we follow this down, this will have your pedal and an OBD2 interface. This interface is different because this is interfacing with the MoCam from MoTeC to make the GM talk to the Chrysler side and vice versa. Also, you'll have some brakes, a brake signal and cruise signals on certain vehicles. I'll kind of get another overview. So you have your computer here, and you have a main trunk that, that shoots down, and you'll have a, a ground. This is a major ground, so 100% that has to be hooked up. If you don't, you could possibly fry your computer. This goes right above your air pump. Next, this is your cam sensor. Or not, basically this controls VVT and your cam timing. So this is a cam sensor plug. This is a bank one, knock one. So it'll go over here. You'll have Two or three connections here. These are for your air com AC compressor. One's for your variable displacement, one's for the clutch. The other one will be a three wire sensor. That's for pressure. And this has that finicky connector on it. These are, you just gotta get them snapped back just right and you press them correctly. Coming over here, you'll have, this is your crank sensor. This is one of the worst ones to get off. Good view of it. Basically, the back of this lock has to be completely flush. Come on, look at it. There we go. Completely flush with the, the tab that you depress. If it's not completely flush, it won't depress it. This is your oil level sensor. This is your oil pan. You have another Knox sensor for bank two. And this right here is your starter. And this is a brand new eight speed harness I modified. So now we're gonna come back up. This part goes over your wire pump and bolts to the wire pump. Then you have two branches. 
one that goes under your throttle body area, and one that goes around your, your intake. For your throttle body area, you'll have, this is your temperature sensor, top of the water pump. This three wire is your map sensor. And you see as a lock, you gotta slide over. This is part of the DOD system. So this controls your displacement on demand. Next to it is a three pin sensor. This is oil pressure. And usually I run this along with it. This is my power source. Basically this pulls power off the alternator for a battery power source for my fuse box. So now coming back up this main trunk, you're gonna have all your coil packs. So this is gonna be coil pack one, three, five, and seven over there. You also have another ground that's hiding. That goes to the back of bank one cylinder head. And there's also another ground over here goes to bank two. So there's three major grounds in this harness that has to be hooked up. Now we're coming back off this trunk and this is your transmission side. This transmission always goes on the driver's side. And you have an O2 sensor. This is bank one, sensor one, upstream. These are our pain to remove. Again, this white connector has to be completely flush at the end of that connector to depress it and remove. Here's uh, two vital connections that come off this uh, transmission loom. And you have, they're different links. The short one, very important, is bank one. Long one's bank two. These are for your fuel injection system. Bank one controls all your fuel injectors on, on that side, but also has your high pressure fuel sensor in it. And see how all these cavities, what are you looking at? All these cavities are full. That means it's a, a 14 through a 16 harness. If you have any empty cavities, that means you have a 17 or newer. And that uses a different computer. The longer trunk will have uh, one pin missing, or actually two. And this is for all the injectors on bank two, plus it controls the mechanical fuel pump. And they're actually the same connector, so you can hook them in backwards. I can't believe GM allowed that to happen. Usually they use a different connector, but they're exactly the same. So you can plug them in um, to the wrong side and your engine will never fire. So now we're going back over. This goes behind the intake. Coming back around, again, this is the ground. This is your coil packs right here. So this is going to be eight. Well, we got six, four, and two on the cylinders. You got your throttle body connection here. This is your two-pin alternator. And I kind of reroute the MAF sensor because this is usually where it comes out um, for swaps. Then you'll have another trunk. You're going to have two O2 sensors. The short one, the one you come to first, will always be your bank two sensor one. Now GM for some reason changed only this O2 sensor in different years. If it's black, you have to use a certain part number that has the black connector on it. Most of them are gray like the others, but uh, on certain eight speeds they're black. And um, I do have that part number, I do have a black O2 connector. And this, this is bank two, sensor two. On the Jeep swaps, remember emissions legal, so we use all 402s. The bank one, sensor two, is actually in the emissions harness. That's why you don't see it. So it's really not that, that much more worse than a Gen 4. There's just a few extra connections. Um, the harnesses are very well made. In here, there's actually fiberglass sheathing inside to help with heat and abrasion. And then they wrap it with really nice harness tape. Um, I use plastic loom in certain places to resist chafing um, and a high quality tape. And I also have this harness tape as well because I actually have to de -loom all this to add certain connections to make everything work for the Jeeps. And to, let's say you're doing a swap with this, to make this run, all you have to do is hook up your engine harness and I'll have one pink wire that comes out by the OB2 interface 
you hook up that to your ignition and that will turn the entire system on. Then I'll also include right here, this includes the starter, starter wire. So you would just crimp on the reciprocal connector to your starter, a solenoid purple wire that will shoot power from the key into here and it will go through the harness just like factory and allow the starter to crank. This has AC connections for the clutch and some other things. But it's really not that bad. Wouldn't be too worried about the extra complexity of it. Um, even with the eight speed, it's not any harder on my end or your end. It's just making everything fit. And I'll show you it's my C10 I've been driving. It has a cam swap in it, it's pretty healthy. I'm struggling to get it to idle a little bit better. Idle is kind of low and it's hard to increase the idle. It's not as simple as telling it to idle at 700 RPMs. It just doesn't listen. And there's my Tahoe and it's swapped as well with the 5.3 Gen 5 6L80. Cool, well thanks for watching and uh, let me know if you guys have any questions and I'll send you uh, answers and quick responses. Thank you, bye.